Today, we're gonna 3D print molds that can make this complex rubber part. We can't just print the part itself because 3D printing doesn't actually offer the wide range of rubbers available that I can make this part out of. And professionally made injection molds can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. In this case, the mold for this tiny little part would have been over $4,500. And there's no way I was gonna spend that much when I knew it would take a few iterations and I had to move quickly. So today, we're gonna walk through the process that I use to make 3D printed molds for complex rubber parts. And then we're gonna test these parts to see if they're any good because that's really what matters, right? Now designing these molds is actually really tricky. There's a lot of small details you have to pay attention to. So I strongly encourage you to look into the details of this video so you don't make some of the same mistakes I have made in the past. The part I'm making is a rubber mount for my Insta360 Go 2, which is intended to isolate vibrations and help with shocks and even crashes because it's gonna flex pretty far before it even comes close to breaking the camera, at least in theory. And since I use this camera specifically because it's like one sixth the weight of a GoPro, the mount itself also has to be light. This lightweight is what makes it possible for me to even use this camera on my smaller vehicles, my RC boats, and also to get some really cool angles from the larger stuff where I cantilever it way off of the end. I recently used it on my Nerf robot and my cold gas thruster car to get some of those unique shots that I couldn't get really with any other camera. And my final design goal is to make it easy to get the camera in and out, but not so easy that it pops out on its own with bumps and crashes. I started the process by designing the actual rubber mount that I want and then analyzing it to ensure that it has the vibration isolation properties that I'm going for. I also added small features on the front to sort of protect the lens in the unlikely event that I crash lens first into the ground. After that, I designed the molds and there are some very critical features to consider here. This mold specifically has two halves that are split right down the middle and a third insert that goes in there where the camera will sit whenever it's installed in the rubber housing. And this is probably the single best part about molding rubber. You get to break all the rules by adding in deep undercuts and complex features that you could never really do on rigid parts. And these mold halves just start out as simple rectangles and then I do combine cuts to remove the material where the mount will be injected into as well as that center insert. I then add in a port that's gonna be used to inject the silicone. Now this port actually goes down below the part and back up again and I'm doing this to push all the air up and out, allowing it to escape through this vent hole at the top. Air is the enemy here, so you have to design things such that air can always get out. And you're gonna see that some of these features specifically taper upwards, there's large radii and voids in the vent to specifically encourage as much air as possible to get out of the mold. So I don't have any air bubbles cured within the part. Next, I add in alignment keys so that the mold halves fit together properly. And that's what these slotted features are. One of the things I do with these is I typically taper the features and I make the male feature a little bit shorter than the full depth of the slot so that the mold halves will come together completely. The third and final piece started out as the CAD model for the camera, but then it was modified to allow me to install it in one of the halves in the mold so that it gives me that really deep undercut but is still removable whenever I finish molding the part. After designing everything, now it was time to print these molds themselves. And I print everything on low quality, which really isn't the best idea, especially for molds, but I'm impatient and I wanna get results quickly. And now you can see I finished printing both mold halves and the center insert. Now I specifically heat stake in a threaded insert to the center part because I wanna be able to hold it all securely together when I'm molding everything and I do not want that part moving around. I noticed right away that the two mold halves don't really sit quite flush together and that is definitely one of the problems with printing on lower qualities. And this is where something like an SLA printer would have especially come into good play just because of how much better the surface details come through on an SLA print. Or even post-processing and sanding to make this flush would have been a great idea. But again, I'm in a rush and I'm too lazy to print on fine resolution, so let's go test out these molds. Obviously, the first step is to mix up the rubber itself. And then I place it in a vacuum chamber to ensure that all of the air is pulled out. Remember, air is the enemy here. And most manufacturers will detail the specific process whether or not you need to vacuum degas your silicone. In this case, I needed to for this particular blend. 
So be sure to check your data sheets. While I waited for that, I put my molds together and I should note that I also did treat these with a mold release before doing all this so that I just had a better chance of getting the part off of this super deep undercut. And then it was finally time to inject the rubber through the fill port and I'm doing this until it actually runs out of that vent at the top. Not only just runs out, but I'm gonna keep pushing it through until I stop seeing air bubbles coming through that vent because I don't want any trapped air in this part at all. If you look at the seam between the mold halves, you can see a ton of leakage. This is really bad because at the very least, it just wastes a bunch of expensive silicone. But at the worst, you're gonna get parts that just drain out of the mold and you get partial fills. And this is largely driven by, again, low print resolution. Regardless, this part actually came out pretty well once I cleaned it up, uh, except the design wasn't great. You see, I had too sharp of a corner here where the camera presses in, and it ended up tearing after just a few install and removal cycles. So it was back to the CAD program, a quick redesign, and 3D printing a whole new set of molds later. Only took one day. And here's what my second design looked like with a much larger cut for the camera to install in and thinner walls to give me myself a little bit more stretch. And then we're back to filling these molds. Now this time I tried to be smart and I put a rubber band around the seam in hopes that it would stop the leakage. But as you can see from this video, it didn't do that much. And the part that came out of this had a massive void near the vent area. This is what happens when you don't get all of the air out. It looks horrible and the part's never gonna be useful. But no worries, I have a ton of silicone left, so we're gonna give it another shot. And this time, I got a few great parts in a row out of this after paying a lot more attention. And after cleaning up the flashing around these parts, they turned out really good. That's another note, the flashing is, again, a function of how well the two mold halves come together. So if you have better quality molds, it saves you a lot of time on the back end if you were to produce several of these parts in a row. At this point, I just need the brackets to mount this rubber guy to, and we can get out there to testing. I designed both a vertical and a horizontal GoPro style mount so that I could configure it for different vehicles. And after slapping them on, it is go time. After multiple tests, I can confirm that this thing works absolutely great at shock and impact loading. I slammed this thing right into the camera on the concrete and no damage occurred because it did fold right under exactly as it was designed to do. Car popped back up and the camera still works great. And on the speedboat, the vibration isolation worked even better. This thing has some incredibly high vibrations from the propeller, but the video came out buttery smooth. I would imagine this would work really well on drones too, because it would eliminate some of those jello artifacts you get from the propeller vibrations. The camera was also much easier to get in and out in these situations, but there was one area that it really failed at, and that was that in some situations, it would jiggle a lot. You see, these cameras have awesome built-in electronic image stabilization, which is why I even tried this route in the first place, but in situations where I hit sharp bumps or rough impact landings, you would see the camera wiggle because it was bouncing around in the rubber, so that probably wouldn't work in all cases. If I were trying to commercialize a product like this, I may even have two different designs, one for heavy vibe from propellers and the other for like rough off-roading that didn't bounce around as much, but still gave me that impact and crash protection. And that's one of the really cool things about being able to 3D print your own molds, because I could try both of those options for a really low cost compared to going to a professional. Because if I did three prototypes and one final mold, I would have thrown away $13,000 and several weeks of lead times just to get to the point of where I want my final product to be. But with the 3D printed mold approach, I could turn around a design iteration and new molds within one day. 
So after just one week, I would have been at my final target design, almost ready for production. I also wanna point out that it is possible to 3D print molds for rigid parts, foam, as well as printing a master pattern for rigid parts. And I have videos on all of these, so please subscribe to the channel and check out some of those other videos if you're interested in some of those molding techniques. Uh, otherwise, that's it for this video. Thank you for listening, and I hope to hear from you soon.